Hey friends, Jeff here with RV Optimizer, and today I want to take you through what is a fairly new product for a company out of Canada called Pleasure Way. So I want to get an expert who can take us through, tell you the things you should know about this particular RV. So let's get going. So I found Marshall here from Pleasure Way. Marshall, introduce yourself where you're from and let's talk about this thing. Yeah, I'm Marshall with Pleasure Way Industries. I am a Southern California resident and native. Uh, I work for Pleasure Way since 2014 to present. Uh, prior to Pleasure Way, I've been in the RV business selling vans since 1996. So you've seen all the stuff. Yes. And what I love to talk to our viewers about is what should they know about this XLTS model? Because when did this version come out? Well, we've been making the uh, wide body vans since the mid 90s. We just canceled it in 2020 was the last year we produced it because we had a long wait time for the B category van. So now that the things are starting to settle down in the industry again, we brought the XLTS back. And a couple unique features about it is it's the only 22 foot wide body in the market at the moment, uh, where most of the B pluses out there are 25 feet. We've also kept it a little narrower than most of the mini motorhomes in the B-plus market at 90 inches wide versus 102 inches wide, so it still drives parks and maneuvers like a regular van. Uh, a couple key structural features that are really separate itself from the other competitors out there is the bones of this vehicle are two by two steel structure compared to aluminum structure. What that allows us to do is actually weld it to the steel floor, creating a unibody cage as opposed to huck bolting it like most motorhome manufacturers are produced today. Uh, with that superior strength, it's gonna ride different and it also allows us to back the structure of this vehicle for a five year, 60,000 mile workmanship warranty compared to industry standard of one to two years. Uh, another feature is all of the fiberglass on this motorhome is adhered to the steel structure compared to screwed to the steel structure. So by eliminating four to five thousand screws it eliminates significant number of chances for water to penetrate through the fiberglass and leak into the motorhome. We've been doing this now for several decades and uh, we don't have very many uh, occasions of delamination. Awesome. Yep. Let's check out some of the cool things on the inside. Yeah, absolutely. Marshall, tell us some of the things that we should know about this. Well, we've tried to take the same floor plan that we've been so successful, uh, successful with in the last 35 years of building these vans by putting the kitchen on the awning side, the U-shaped uh, sofa, which is a very comfortable recliner, also makes into a dining area and into rather large twin beds or king size bed. And if I'm not mistaken, that's like a memory foam, right? Is yeah, there's three different layers of foam inside there. There's a high density memory foam, a medium density foam in the middle, and then there's a Dacron cooling foam that we put over the top before we wrap it with the ultra leather. That way, if you do get into the summer's heat, like here in Arizona, 110 degrees today, when you lay down or sit down on this bed, it's not gonna transfer the heat through the vehicle and give you an uncomfortable night's sleep. Yeah, absolutely. You know? But with the extra width on this vehicle, you're gonna get a little bit more aisle space. You're gonna get a little bit more cabinet depth throughout all the cabinets. But the real kicker in this van is, we wanted to separate the toilet from the shower. So if you look at the uh, uh, interior here, this is a really nice bathroom. And the materials used behind the shower is polished Corian. The materials used behind the sink is also polished Corian instead of wallpaper. And uh, you got uh, a separate toilet there, which is a real residential toilet. So it's very comfortable to sit on and it's got a lot of room. So for 2024, we've tripled our uh, uh, lithium battery bank from 200 amp hours to 600 amp hours, which has allowed us to also pair it with a 3000 watt Xantrex inverter, replacing the 2000 watt Xantrex inverter. So now the inverter with 3000 watts is large enough to run the new Truma Avanti quiet air conditioning unit. So those three major changes for 2024 have really impacted the market and made things uh, uh, more competitive in the industry. I love that. Well, Will that allow you to run the microwave as well? Yes, you yeah. can run uh, basically anything that's yeah. plugged into a wall outlet off of the lithium batteries and the inverter system. You just have to be careful as far as running too much components because time. obviously you have 3000 watts to work with. What about on the, the roof, solar? Yeah, the roof has five 100 watt solar panels on the roof, totaling 500 watts of solar. And that'll allow you to obviously trickle charge your batteries while you're in the sun. 
Um, you know, the lights are 12 volts, the sofa motor is 12 volts, the awning is 12 volts, the refrigerator is 12 volts. So as that's consuming the power, the uh, solar panels are refilling, you know, the, the battery bank system so that you can camp uh, for plenty of days. Uh, yeah. We also have with our battery management system and in our touchscreen panel, you know, there's a built-in timer on there. So that it'll actually count down and tell you you have three days, four hours, and, and eight minutes before your batteries are depleted. Yeah, it's what, one of the few that I've seen actually do that on any of the RV displays. Right, yeah, yeah absolutely. And it's really nice, too, because once you put charge to the batteries, that timer will invert into how much time it takes until fully charged, kind of taking the math out of the game for you so that you can just focus on where you're going and what you want to do. Right, and based on the draw at the time, right? So Absolutely. if you've got five things going, it's going to tell you, you keep those five things going, you've only had this much time left. Exactly right. Yep. So yep. one of the questions I have, so you have a different inverter, you have a different AC unit. Hey, when it's hot as heck out here, yep. um, how, can I run these going down the road, or how has Pleasure Way thought about that? Yes, well, um, what we have done is, because in some states you're not allowed to run your propane generator while you're driving. So by increasing the inverter size to 3,000 watts, you could simply turn the inverter on and run the AC unit down the road off of your lithium batteries. So while you're driving, that's depleting the battery bank rapidly. So what we've done is we've taken the 180 amp alternator, upgraded it to a 220 amp alternator so that you could receive charge from the alternator while you're driving to recharge those batteries as you're consuming it running that air conditioning unit. That's nice. And I think that's something most people don't even think about when they're buying an RV until right. you have one and then yes. you realize, what do I do in that kind of situation? So right. I like how Pleasure Ways address that. Yeah, you know, a lot of our uh, year model changes and, and year model turns, we learn through our owners groups because we have several rallies a year that we go to. We have a lot of Q&A sessions and seminars, and we ask people what they're doing with their rigs and what they would like to see enhanced. And so we go back to the drawing boards, and every year model turn, we make a few changes, and it's always for the better. I, I love that. And if I'm not mistaken, you guys have one, if not the longest warranty in the RV business. Yes, um, well when I first started uh, selling these vans back in 96, 97, I want to say there was a one-year warranty. And then we jumped to a three-year warranty. It didn't harm us. So then we jumped to a five-year warranty just to separate ourselves from everybody else. You know, we don't build as many as everybody does that, that are out there with these huge manufacturers, but we also know these guys don't want to step in the arena and go part to part, component to component, and warranty to warranty. So, you know, we always say, you know, you get what you pay for. Yeah, no, you know, I, I the, agree. The bitterness of poor quality lingers long after the sweet taste of a cheap price. <laughs> That's right. So, um, if we were to get one of these, you also, I think, get like your own concierge person for a period of time to ask questions yeah. to, right? Yeah, the learning curve on these is different for everybody. And uh, what we found is, is that if we can play a part in that, we can eliminate a lot of errors. So when we receive the warranty registration paperwork from each dealer after they've delivered one of these vehicles, we have four gentlemen in the warranty office that reach out and give you a toll-free number to contact, an email address, and basically want you to contact them with your any issues or with any questions that you may have. That way we can guide you to you know, through the learning process a little easier and make it all understandable for each and every one of our owners. Really? Well, Marshall, thanks for taking us through this. You evidently are very knowledgeable about the product and I appreciate that. And, Absolutely. and I would say if anybody's like on the, the cusp of should we look at a pleasure way? Should we look at something else? I would recommend looking at these units and uh, they are a little bit more expensive than some to compare to and maybe not quite as others. Yeah. Uh, but I do think you're right. You do get what you you pay for sometimes. Right. And, and, I, and these things, uh, from my understanding, are what they call stall built, right? Yes. So they don't go down a production line. They stay in one place. People come do their part, sign off on it, go back and get into another one. That's correct. There's an electrician that not only runs the wiring loom, but installs the wiring loom inside the walls of the van. Those wiring looms are also secured with tabs every three to six inches to ensure that they're not moving and shifting and or coming apart during travel. So when he's completed, we have a plumber that comes in and does all the water and propane fittings. Then the final guy is the cabinet assembler. Every one of our cabinets is cut to his exact specification by a CNC machine. It's then ran through an edge bander. It's marked with a VIN number and it's coach specific. So one person does all the cabinet work inside here. And when those three guys sign off on something, that means their job has been completed and uh, it moves to the next person to where he can obviously get his job done. We've been doing this now for 38, 39 years. And uh, we think that's one of the reasons why we don't have as many claims and warranty as other manufacturers do.
through. You know, actual build time on one of these is close to eight weeks. So, you know, between six and a half to eight weeks to build a van, a little closer to eight weeks to build one of the uh, wide body XLTSs that we're standing in now. Very nice. Well, thank you again for taking us through this and talking about some of these highlights. Yeah. And uh, if you guys are interested, please check out Pleasure Way. Yeah. And I Thanks hope so all your trips are optimized.